Seven years ago, my life was completely different. We were living at home with my parents, I just became an apprentice, and my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, was running her own coffee shop, only it was failing. Every two weeks, I would transfer $500 over to her so she can make ends meet. It was either that or we take on the consequences of going into debt. We learned quickly that business could be cruel. I remember asking myself if it would be like this forever. We wanted to move on with our lives, but we were in no financial position to do so. We were incarcerated to those circumstances. Many times we would go over the variables again and again to see if there was anything we missed or if we could somehow make it better. It would inevitably lead us to talk about the one resource we never had at our disposal. Money. Obsessing over money, it's the worst, it's the curse, and it lurks in the mind as you work through the thirst and you're hoping you find the reason it's leaving. You deposit, but then you lost it, it's leaving. Gotta forget it, you spent it, it's ended, it's lended. Gotta help others, you don't aid, you give it, you send it. The low rate is lifted, course the market is shifted. Money's been distributed into it and sifted with exhibit infinite. You never have enough, that's right. Money will lead us through, that's true. But it's hard to put up this fight, I know. But it's something you have to do. I know what it's like to be absolutely broke, but rich with heart, with drive, and with dreams. I want you to know the market is like a door. Some of us, our most skilled humans, can kick that door right off the hinges. But the majority of us, including myself and my wife, have to open that door the exact same way. We upgrade our skills, we put on our best game faces, we walk right up to that door, and we knock. the hardest part because it's the most suspenseful and it takes years. Every whispering insecurity is going to start shouting at you. Nobody wants you. You're not good enough. They know you're an imposter. Dude, you're a joke. You're a, joke. a lot of the demons are in your head and you're going to have to tell each and every one of them to shut up. Trust me. My wife and I did that for years. You're going to have to double down on effort and on patience and that it's exactly what my wife did. She worked every day of the week when it was feasible. She expanded the menu. She added grilled cheese melts, banana breads, egg tarts. She pushed herself in the V8 under the hood. But unfortunately, there are just some races you can't win. The ship was taken on too much water too fast, but I'm proud because she was able to bring it close to shore. Three years into a five-year lease, my wife finds another company to take over the shop. The contract still had her name on the lease, though, so if the new company didn't pay rent, the collectors would come knocking on her door. So we weren't in the clear, but man, it was a ton of weight lifted off of our shoulders. I remember my wife turning to me and asking me what she should go into. She didn't know what direction to take, and neither did I. We were still worried about the money. We were still incarcerated by many circumstances circumstances, but at least it felt like the links in the chain were showing significant weakness. Two days later, Monday morning, my wife gets a call from a really old friend of hers. The friend says, hey, are you still doing that coffee shop and bagel thing? My wife says, no, actually, I just handed it over to another company. The friend says, good, because I need your resume. telling you the story. Because sometimes people come into our lives in clutch moments that feel like sheer luck or even destiny. This is one of those people. My wife's been working with her ever since and without the job offer, we have no idea where our lives would have led us. This is why this for me is not a train call. This is my turn to repay the favor. So let's rewind this video for a quick second. You see these ABS trap adapters are infamous for cracking along the edges. So especially when you see T-tape wrapped around the threads, it registers as a major red flag that needs inspection. And these cracks are are through and through. I knew right when I saw this drain that it was probably 10 to 15 years old and it was in need of a major update. At this point, I would have normally turned to the owner and told them that because a conversation about money would have had to ensue. But I also knew that for the favor that she blessed us with, I wasn't going to walk away with any money. 
My labor and my skill are at this person's disposal because she threw my wife a life jacket when she was swimming ashore. She bestowed upon us a means of bringing our dreams into reality and for all those variables I owe. skill trades will have a hard time understanding this concept. They will think your career is just a career, nothing more than installing and fixing fixtures. But the truth is, is that your skill, the mastery you have over your body and the materials you work with day in and day out are in some applications going to be the way you show your deepest affection for others. You may not be able to solve the hardest complications of their lives, but you will set up their futures in this context of plumbing for success. You will redo entire drains. You will install water hammer resters. You will suggest vacuum breakers. You will add cleanouts all for the purpose that if something in the plumbing system is misbehaving, we are on top of it. This is not just our career. It is a way we embrace the ones we owe and also the ones we love. We love. Exactly. That's it. All right.